tickets to the State Opera House in Vienna to see the Black Swan. She just about flipped. <laughs> All right, so this is Stephen Chen, and I'm doing a night hacking European tour. My first stop is in Munich, and I, I bumped into this um, this stranger. You don't you don't live in Munich, do you, Kirk? No, I don't live in Munich. I actually live currently live in a small village outside of Budapest, nestled right up into a nice <laughs> little mountain valley. Cool. So, fun. for folks who don't know, Kirk Pepperdine is a performance tuning genius, and um, I don't—I have no idea what he's what he's doing out here. But we figured we'd take advantage of the fact that he's physically out here to to see come, some of the latest stuff he's been working on. So what, what, have you, what have you been working on, Kirk? Well, what have I been working on? Well, you know, as always, what we've been working on or what I've been working on is trying to figure out better ways for people to get to the root of their performance problems faster. And um, so we had our team in London, our J Clarity team, actually banging away on, uh, on some, what I call, different types of profilers. And all the profilers so, are really... So is this your traditional histograms and run of the mill? Yeah, okay. So run of the mill <coughs> IDE profiler? Well, if I wanted traditional histograms and that type of profiling, I'd use uh, NetBeans, wouldn't I? Probably. Use yeah. a NetBeans profiler. Yeah, that's, that's a good tool. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's a good one to be talking about now. We won't mention the others. Uh, but... Um, uh, but, you know, so there's no point in going down that path because that's a path well trodden. So we figured, okay, um, what do those tools give you, right? Well, they give you a, a nice histogram. Yeah. And if you have, happen to collect the right data, then the histogram is meaningful and you can get some information out of it. And, you know, you can use that information to figure out what's going on in your application and tune it, yeah? Yeah, that's the goal. And if you happen to collect the wrong data, then you can spend a lot of time going down really bad paths. Then you can spend a lot of time going down really bad paths, right? And, um, you know, so part of the methodology and stuff that I've been teaching in my, in my performance training course is how to make better decisions as to which path to go down. Mm -hmm. And so the guys looked at it and said, yeah, we can code that. We can actually write that in a program. And I said, okay, well, I'm glad you can because I certainly don't know how to. <laughs> <laughs> so they took a bunch of these so did, uh, did this involve a, a brain scan? Did you have to go in and get your, your, your cranium physically scanned? Yeah, the twitch is apparently just temporary. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if I'm around sharp objects, you might want to be leery. Be careful okay. or whatever like that. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's more like a, a whiteboard uh, type session where we just uh, drew out um, decision trees. Cool. How do you tune a system? It's a big decision tree, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a little bit of learning algorithms that go on. And that was the hard part where I looked at it and said, okay, you know, you guys can do that. I know how to tune it. You know, you guys can figure out that stuff, right? Um, so, you know, so it's, it's, it's part of it is, you know, getting the views themselves. But the other part of it is knowing which view uh, we need to get. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where all of the uh, smart stuff happens in this particular profiler. It's like figuring out, okay, this is what's going on inside the system, and let's use that information to get a view of what's going on. And, and let's not give people a histogram. Let's just tell them what's going on inside the application. So you're just gonna give them the answer without even making them work for it? That's the idea. Oh. <laughs> they don't have to work for it anymore, right? Yeah, that's, that's the modern age. We, we want instant gratification, even on performance profiles. Well, you know, if you're a hunter, you know how it's like, you know, you go out, you find the deer, you got your bow and arrow, and you basically, like, take it down and drag it home for, yeah, yeah. you know, someone to cook it up for you, right? Yeah. And it gives you that gratification, you know, that you've, you've hunted down that performance bug, and it's like, you know, you're the hero. <laughs> All yeah. right, so why don't you show us the, the weapon of choice here? Okay, I'll so pop this up is... Your screen. So there's... Give them the warning about how yeah, yeah. boring War this warnings, demo is. Warnings are awesome. Yeah, we, I mean, we don't have like blinking things and flashy things going on, but you know. Uh, but what we do have is a bunch of servers set up in Amazon and they have an application that's been configured to basically perform poorly. Okay. 
Like, well, you had to work to make this perform poorly, whereas most of our applications just suck. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I like to tell people. It's like, I get paid to write applications that don't perform. <laughs> it's really fun. And sometimes it's not as easy as you think. I mean, of course, you can write an application that performs very poorly, but to write it in a, um, you know, believable way. Yeah. So it doesn't look like a work of fiction so much. Cool. Anyways, uh, so, we have a, so we have a bunch of applications running here, and there's a whole bunch of things wrong with them. Now, um, just for the benefit of uh, every, anybody looking at this particular dashboard, um, you can see that we've uh, conveniently named the server after uh, whatever's gone wrong. Um, <clears throat> now, yeah, a little bit about how this works, right? So we have the, in this case, Amazon running the server, and we run a little daemon uh, uh, beside the server, so it's, it's running inside the server there, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's really quiet. It's not doing anything. You, besides taking up uh, minimal amounts of memory, you're not actually going to even notice that it's there. Okay. And then we have this dashboard that basically connects out to it, and if we want to run a diagnostic, then it's no problem. I just go here. In this case, I'll say, let's diagnose all of these guys. And bang. Cool. Yeah. There, we're taking down the cloud now. Now we're taking down the cloud, exactly. Now, now even the diagnostic algorithms actually are written, uh, so they run very, very light. Again, if we are, you know, one of the ideas that we have internally is that um, it's your hardware, not ours. So we don't want to use any more than we actually have to in order to get the diagnostic done. Mm -hmm. So we want to be really, really minimal, right? But um, you know, the advantage of this is that you, you know how do you get something to scale? Yeah. Do less. Yeah. It's a good approach. Right? So since this does less, we should have a, a really um, good chance of scaling out uh, beyond what the current limits are. Um, I, I think the current limits for good scalability run somewhere between 1,000 to 2,000 virtual machines in that range depending on you know, who you're using. Um, uh, we hopefully should uh, go beyond that. Nice. That's what we're hoping to go beyond that by hopefully at least one order of magnitude. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if it all works, right? That's, that's the whole plan now. Anyways, uh, so... Um, so I see some, some results. They have coffee cups. Yeah, this, I don't know who's actually who's chosen icons the icons here, but we have funky icons, I guess, related to the different underlying problems here. And so let's just take a look at one. Which one do you want to look at? I, I like the garbage can. You like the garbage can? Okay, yeah. so, you know, I like the Start in the dumpster. Myself. So let's start in the dumpster. Okay, so there's some garbage collection problems with this particular server. We can look at it and we can see that, um, well, here it is, some nice texty stuff that you can read. But effectively, what we're saying is that we have a garbage collection event happening 4.31 times per second, and we're spending about 86% of our time in garbage collection, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, oh, and even worse than that, the 95% of these collections that are occurring are like full GCs. Um, um, percentage tenured, yeah. So, so anyways, so there's some really bad stuff happening here. <clears throat> and you can see a breakdown of what your CPU is doing over here, just a little bit of information that we give. Yep. And uh, so now the next step is to actually go into your application and uh, deal with the garbage collection issue. Yeah, so that, I don't think you need Kirk Pepperdine to tell you that you have a garbage collection issue by looking at that. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably not, <laughs> you know. But it, I mean, but if you, you know, if you'd like, I'd quite happily come over and visit. And, and, and you know, pop issue. up the UI, say, oh. Right, okay, so what else do we have in here? We've got an action plan, and so it's basically saying, okay, so at this point, what we're saying is that we need more information, and we're gonna go into the garbage collection logs. Um, right now, our guys in London are basically go working on something that's going to say. Scrape the garbage collection logs and do some analysis on it. Uh, no, actually, in live production systems, you know, I, it's my opinion that you shouldn't really be scraping live uh, garbage collection logs. Garbage collection logs are fantastic for static analysis, yeah, yeah. but there's information that we can get um, where we can actually do a dynamic analysis that's probably uh, for runtimes, it's uh, more powerful than what's what's currently available. Um, you know, um, 
in most of the tools that are out there. I think in all the tools that are out there, except for maybe, actually, I don't know any. Well, let's just ignore that part. But, um, <laughs> you know, why bash the comp competition? They can do it themselves. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, so this can give you more information as to exactly what's going on. Maybe it's a configuration issue. Maybe it's, a, uh, it's, it's an allocation rate issue. But w whatever the issue is, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, we're very confident that this is going to be the under underlying issue. Okay, now let's take one other and go through it. Uh, okay, which one, like? one. Uh, which one do you like? Which one do you like? Oh, here, threads are waiting on an external system. So um, uh, we just, I, I should just say that one of our consultants just spent 12 hours with a client. Um, well, to be honest, he didn't have proper access to the system uh, for mm -hmm. some wacko reasons. Uh, but <clears throat> he spent, he burned 12 hours of billable, basically figuring out what we just figured out here in a few seconds, right? Threads are waiting on an external system, right? So you get thread pools and, and um, you know, you get requests coming in and they get backed up in a queue and they're waiting for a thread. It's like, where's my threads? Mm -hmm. Well, they're all off trying to do something else against some other system someplace else, right? Um, and, you know, here we are, right? So J Clarity, Java simulations, nothing, waiting on socket server. Nice, nicely named class, I guess. <laughs> method. Uh, and you can see that basically here, you, you, like, you know, the, our system is mostly idle. So yeah. there's really nothing going on here. And here we're getting a little bit more information so that we can get causal execution. Mm -hmm. Right, so now we know exactly so which that's interesting, call. it shows you different sort of diagnostic information based on the type of error you're getting. So it kind yeah. of tailors the report. Of course, we want to give the best information possible for the underlying problem, right? And, and not all views are equal in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, there's an action plan here. Um, you know, um, it, again, some of the, some of the, some yeah. of these so it kind of points you, it points you in the right direction to kind of start diagnosing it further. Yeah, so at this level of maturity, we're saying, okay, we're, you're at, we're going to point you in the right direction. And as we're building out the tool and basically eat up the decision tree, mm -hmm. we're going to give m much more detailed information over time uh, on each of the, you know, specific branches as we travel down them. Um, you know, there's certainly a lot of things that we can do in terms of the, the too much context switching. Um, that we're currently yeah. not doing, but you know, um, yeah. So but this is a this is a work in progress. I think you told me before we started that this is the first. This demo. is the first demo I've done of it. Uh, we've actually done yeah. This is the first live demo we've done uh, out cool. in a while like this. So so you, you saw it first on the the night hacking on night hacking. That's correct. Java eight tour. Yeah. <laughs> we have we do have customers actually using it in their production environments. Oh, that's, right. That's. Scary. Um, no, it's, it's working out quite nicely for them. They're okay. very happy about it. Um, we found a number of significant bugs in systems, and um, they were quite happy about how much time we've been able to save them in terms of uh, being able to get through diagnostic processes and give them something you know, like a report that they can send up or put mm -hmm. into a bug system mm -hmm. or something like that. Anyways. So yeah, cool. so here's another one. And you know, that, there's a bunch of other features in here, but basically, I think, the gist of it is, you know, here's something that gets to the root of a problem in your system. Nice. Okay. So how would folks find out more about JClarity and the tools you guys have? Well, you can go to, of course, www.jclarity.com. We have Friends of JClarity, which is a mailing list, and um, where we have a number of performance discussions happening there. Um, somewhat randomly all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place to sneak in performance advice from, from you and friends. There's, a, there's some very interesting people on the list. I have to tell you, um, I think I learn as much from the list as I contribute. Cool. There's some really um, very clever people there that I have a lot of respect for that, that are just willing to look at a problem and say, hey, you know, Oh, you know, I mean, they're not allowed to solve your full performance problems, but, you know, if you come in with specific questions, they'll say, yeah, this is how things work. Cool. And um, in just an hour from now, actually, you're, you're, you're a, um, a audience member for the upcoming event. Yeah, you, you, I'm you flew be, out yeah. all the way from Hungary just to watch. I, I'm just going to be your lackey and just carry <laughs> microphones around and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, pop over here, Tony. 
So yeah, guys, Tony, come on in, Tony. Yeah, you can you can uh, just slide in here. Yeah, I guess. Borrow, borrow my mic. Hi. Yeah, there you go. All right, so in just an hour from now, we're going to have our main event. A bunch of user group members are going to be coming here to see the um, Duke script. Is and Tony's yeah. going to give Duke us a demo. Script. Yeah, we're going to show a demo of, uh, and it's also going to be probably the first uh, live demo of Duke script, at least under this name. <laughs> 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 so a lot of, lot of first time demos uh, today. I'm looking forward to that. All right, Cole, you want to say something, Kirk? No, I just want to know when the pizza oven is going to get fired up. Uh, uh, we already tried it, but, but right now I was more concerned about the beer getting cold. Ah. <laughs> you, have to, you have, you have to have priorities. <laughs> yeah, well, beer, beer over pizza, that's a good, that's a good priority. Smart already. guy. There you go. All right, so thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Kirk. Thank you for uh, putting this together. And um, we'll be back online in just about an hour from now. We'll kick the stream live um, probably in the next half an hour or so once people start rolling in. So thank you.